A look at the Staples Center on this clear, beautiful night in Los Angeles. After a red-hot week in L.A., it has cooled off just a little bit for the 13,000 or so boxing fans who are in the arena and have just enjoyed Manny Pacquiao's knockout of Hector Velasquez, getting ready now for Eric Morales versus Zahir Rahim. Eric Morales has achieved so much in his boxing career that in the months since his decision win over Manny Pacquiao earlier this year, and despite the fact that Morales lost two of his three fights so far with Marco Antonio Barrera, Mexican writers have begun comparing him to the great Julio Cesar Chavez. It's quite a story for the young man who started practically from nowhere. Boxing is like a drug. And suddenly at center ring, Morales takes over the fight. You get involved and it's difficult to say, I'm stopping. And Morales chases him across the ring and says, let's fight. The road to boxing stardom was filled with obstacles for Mexico's Eric Morales. Born in the infamous border town of Tijuana, El Terrible was never far from trouble. Here, the northern area is classified as the red light district. It can be a dangerous place. Many of his friends had family that were involved in possibly the shipping of illegal immigrants and other things. There are alleys where children can go in and sniff glue and smoke marijuana. There are probably, not probably, there are a lot of things going on. Drugs, people looking for the American dream, a thousand things. Eric avoided the dangers of the streets by learning how to box in his father's gym, just upstairs from the apartment where he grew up. As a kid born into the world of boxing, your toys are gloves. All his games were played upstairs in the gym, in the ring, everything. He even started crawling in the ring. A fighter himself in the 70s and 80s, Jose Morales was role model and mentor for young Eric, who took up boxing at age five. I think that all kids want to be like their parents, and we try to imitate what we have and what we see. So what we had and what we saw was boxing. Eric followed in his father's footsteps with his own successful amateur career. But when the boy wanted to turn pro, his father remembered his own past experiences. I never wanted my children to be involved with anything in boxing. For many, we go in with the illusion of becoming world champions and we never achieve that. Others get hurt with irreversible damage. I didn't want that for my son. You can't offer a child a sport and then take it away. You can't do that. In convincing Jose, Eric got support from an unlikely ally, his mother. It should be the person who decides, I can't, I don't want to, it's too hard, and not let others decide what you want to do. She'd say, look, I don't want you to fight, but if you fight and lose, I'm going to beat you. So I had two options, don't fight, or if I fight, win. As Eric pounded his way through early opponents, the once reluctant father was impressed. In the beginning, it was difficult to accept my son was a fighter. But on the contrary, I saw his talent in what he was doing and the love he gave to boxing. Today, as the wins and titles continue to accumulate, even Eric and his family admit his career long ago surpassed his expectations. As a mother, like anybody, I want everyone to do well, that everyone reaches their goals and is successful. But uh, it would be a great lie to say, I've always dreamed about this, no? I never dreamt about winning two world titles in different weight classes, let alone three. I dreamed about winning 25,000 pesos, about $2,500. Boy, the day I get that. I never dreamt winning these stratospheric numbers. Those were my dreams. There's nowhere else in sport you'll find greater passion, greater courage. This is boxing at its best.
dreams that came true because of the path he chose to follow, the path of most resistance. I don't know whether to tell you if it was destiny or not, but when you find something you like, do it. Well, with the continued support of his father, who it appears will be his trainer from start to finish of his boxing career, and of course from his mother, uh, Eric Morales won a world championship at 122 pounds at age 21, and since then has gone on to win titles at 126 and 130, and he's looking at the possibility of trying to move up and go into another weight class to do so. Larry, what is the next chapter? You would have to say that nature and nurture led to stature for Eric Morales, and now he hopes to his version of rapture, becoming the first Mexican fighter to win four titles from 122 to 135 pounds, or as we used to say in the simpler time, the featherweight and lightweight championships of the world. Only visited in the past by such great fighters as Canzoneri and Armstrong and Arguello. But whatever, the old days might have been not all that great. Remember, they used to use orange peels for mouthpieces, and Yogi Berra used to eat banana sandwiches. Anyway, this is Morales' first appearance as a lightweight. And two banana sandwiches will get him up to welterweight, right? <laughs> we'll see what happens to Eric from here. He's been one of the most spirited and interesting fighters in the sport. And Manny, the opponent, is interesting, too. Zahir Rahim was on the 1996 United States Olympic team. He's won 26 pro fights. His only loss came when last year, as a calorie-counting featherweight, he lost a fairly controversial decision in Houston to Houston's Rocky Juarez. Now he fights Eric Morales nine pounds north of there at 135 and says that he isn't going to box, but rather he's going to fight him. Will he? Can he? I think he'll fight more than he fought with Rocky Juarez, but once again he's going in against one of the bigger punchers in boxing. And his natural style is to be a slick, stylish, counter-punching type fighter. So that's not going to change that much. But I do think he's going to be physically much, much stronger because I know when he was training with me about four years ago for a short period of time, he was training and went 150, 154, and was only normal, and he was in great shape then. So making weight has been a big, big factor, I know, in his career, as well as Morales. But I think for this fight, he'll be stronger, and he'll put up a much better fight. And if Morales isn't right, he could score an upset tonight. You know, you make a great point, because Raheem's trainer, Don House, says the biggest thing he's had to do with Raheem is get him to the point where he can train to actually fight, rather than just training to make weight and not paying any attention to what he does in the ring. Here's the tale of the tape now for Eric Morales and Zahir Rahim. And again, you saw Manny Pacquiao fighting at 130 pounds. Pacquiao hopes to fight Morales at 130 in the rematch, but Morales is toying with the idea of full-time duty in the 135-pound weight class, so that's where he's fighting tonight. 134 and a half at the weigh-in for Morales, 133 for Rahim. You can see that they are virtually identical in age. Morales, who just turned 29 two weeks ago, is one inch taller. He's got a one-inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist, and tonight, as they enter the ring unofficially, Rahim is slightly the heavier man. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Eric Morales, Zahi, Zahir Rahim fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case the cut is caused, in case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. Great looking entrance outfit here for Zahir Rahim. You can see his record against current or former champions, Luisito Espinosa. It's been a frustrating career of fits and starts for this guy who was once a great prospect from Philadelphia, Larry. Right, and, and he says that coming back from the Olympics where he reached the third round, and another Philadelphian, David Reed, won a gold medal for the dramatic last round knockout. He felt depressed for years on and off. And so he bounced from manager to promoter, to manager to promoter, uh, fighting at weights that weren't really uh, his natural weight. We'll see if he can do better at this weight. One of the toughest things for the psychology of this sport, Emmanuel, is so much is subjective, 
trying to avoid comparing yourself to somebody else when everybody's career is going to be different. Everyone is different, and you have to realize that. I mean, you can never tell which direction fate is going to move certain individuals in. You have to take whatever hand you get, so to say, and move on with it and try to do the best you can. I'm looking, he has a great outfit on it. It looks beautiful, but traditionally, the prettier the outfit, the lesser your chances of winning have been. So for the most part, <laughs> I would want my guy to come in there with not even a robe on, and that's the case. You, so you're saying you like to see yeah, your guys go yeah, with rags to riches. Yeah, but I uh, do that after the fight, not before the fight. Well, I guess Raheem is saying, okay, if I, if I haven't had a chance to be a king in boxing, <laughs> I'll dress like a king. Act as if. Give me the fighter with the plain outfit on. Now here comes Morales, and he will get a tumultuous reception. We are about two hours, 15 minutes north of Tijuana by car. Eric Morales had 25 professional fights by the time he was 20, won his first championship at 21, has had different championships on and off for the last eight years. Few fighters have such a zest for combat, Matty. That's what's made him the fighter is. He holds a lot of animosity towards Barrera, a lot of other things, but those are the things inside of him that motivates him. And I really like him as a fighter. Here's a look at some of the big wins. He won his first fight with Barrera and was shaded in both the second and third fights. There is considerable talk of a fourth. You talk about a fighter with options. If Morales wins this, he could be a likely opponent for the winner of the Castillo Corrales fight for the lightweight championship. He could fight another lightweight champion named Juan Diaz. He could fight Pacquiao. He could fight a fourth fight against Marco Antonio Barrera. That's what happens when you're active and exciting as he has been throughout his career. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from Staples Center here in the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California, USA, Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated presents 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC International uh, Lightweight Championship. Brought to you in association with Integra Inmediata and AEG, along with HBO Sports, sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission. Chairman Chris Mears, Vice Chairman Armando Vigara, and Executive Officer Armando Garcia. The three judges at ringside scoring this ballot on the 10-point system will be Dr. James Jenkin, Raul Caiz Sr., and Julie Letterman. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action inside the ring, referee John Shorley. And now, from Staples Center, Los Angeles, California, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, Wearing red, official weight, 133 pounds. Professional record, 26 victories, including 16 knockouts with only one defeat. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, here is Zahir King And his opponent across the ring in the blue corner, wearing black, official weight, 134 and one half pounds. Professional record, 48 victories, including 34 knockouts with only two defeats. Thomas y Caballeros de la Zona Norte, Tijuana, Mexico, the three-time world champion, Eric El Terrible Mo. Second, okay, 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 guys, for the WBC title, give me a good, clean fight. Obey my commands and protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves, good luck.
Sometimes Eric Morales fights down to the level of opponents when he doesn't perceive them to be serious threats. Let's see how he handles this opponent. If he does that tonight, he's going to be making a mistake. He looks like the welterweight that he weighed in at tonight. Well, you know what would be fun? If, if the fight goes the distance, we'll get to see how much Harold Letterman's card differs from that of his daughter, Julie Letterman. Does the acorn <laughs> fall far, as we say, from the scoring tree? Eric Morales says, I'll cut off the ring. I'll make him stand and trade with me. Some figure that Zahir Rahim will do anything but stand and trade with Morales, but Rahim said, I'll fight him. We'll see. Well, he's certainly standing more flat-footed than you're, we're accustomed to seeing him. Well, if he, he continues to fight that fight, he got his work cut out tonight because Zahir is a very skillful, talented fighter with great coordination. And unless Morales picks it up and makes it a more busy and intense fight, he's going to have a rough fight tonight on his hands. So is, there, is there potentially still a world champion inside Zahir Rahim Emanuel, or is too much time gone by in his career? No, I don't think so. I, I, I mean, I think so, but also the fact that he's fighting at his proper weight division. Weight was a major factor as well as inactivity with this fighter. Good left hook by Rahim. And you saw his hand speed, which is certainly comparable to that of Morales. Great right hand over the top by Morales. That's one of his better weapons. It's interesting looking at the gloves. We have once again here, we have Morales with the winning gloves on. The same gloves that he was insisting on using and he was able to get. A good and, left and, and, hook and, by Raheem. Got, yeah. got the attention of Morales. He's also raked him with a right hand earlier. Yeah, so you make a great point. Raheem is wearing the puncher's glove. Reyes and Morales, regarded as the puncher in the fight, is wearing the protective glove, winning. Morales has had hand problems in the past. That's right. Break. I got you. I got you. And I don't see much difference. If you take the label off of the gloves and, and put the, no label on them, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference to me. What about the fact that winning is padded with foam and Reyes with horsehair? Some say that makes a difference. It does make a difference, but it, it's not to me. I've had both gloves on. I, I don't see much difference. I'm sure Morales would say it's not about the gloves, it's about the fists. Well, Morales is opening up now because he senses that Raheem is a little bit quicker and he's trying to overwhelm him. That's what he's going to have to do because he fights a technical fight. He's going to have his hands for him. Morales getting in a chopping right hand inside. He has found some holes in Raheem's defense, yeah, he's but he's it. also gotten hit by Raheem's accurate punching. But he's, he's also noticing that Raheem's main defense is mainly to just bend down and to take a squat instead of rolling punches. So as a result, he's rather going to land his right hand by shooting it more straighter and shoot it shorter. Round one, a more physical round than we've seen in previous Zahir Raheem fights. No, it, don't, we don't need that back. We don't need that back. Okay. When, when you throw the right hand, watch out with your delay. Come on, the right hand is what you need. To do. Don't, don't, let, don't be short with a punch. Give him a little bit of water. Is it going nice? I got it, baby. Is it going nice? You got that round. Let's go around, baby. Get him in that jam. Get that jam. Move. Get it out here. It's home with a good One thing Raheem did in the first round was to take the crowd out of the fight, but it was only the first round. That's right. Mainly his left hook right there, but he's, but he's going to have to be careful because Morales is going to be a little bit more aggressive, I think, now. Raheem effectively took away Morales' jab, too. Morales threw 13 jabs, didn't land any. Ultimately resorted to power punches and went seven out of 30. Harold Letterman gave Zahir Rahim round one on his scorecard, probably because of the two solid left hooks.
Raheem in the middle of the ring, beating Morales to the punch and landing his own jab. Morales trying to come across the top with the right hand, but Raheem managed to step aside. Morales' balance is not too good tonight. Sometimes it's not good early in a fight. No, he's off balance a lot. When he throws his punches, he finishes up off balance a lot. But he still is a big puncher. And that's why I didn't put so much emphasis on, on the uh, gloves in the fight with Packy, because he's a good puncher himself. Manny, in recent years, virtually every single one of Morales' fights against a opposition has gone the distance. He's a good puncher, but he's not an intimidating puncher. He's a great fighter. Well, you actually look at Pacquiao outside of Barrera, I don't think he's knocked out too many of the top part of the guys, neither. It's, you get to the top level, it's a little different. Yep. But uh, Morales has been fighting a lot of top fighters for the last few years more so. Hard right hand, guys. Zahir Rahim is seizing the initiative. He's outboxing Morales right now. He's beating them to the punch. He's fighting the Let fight go, that he go. wants to fight, and he's doing pretty well. Doing very well. Eric Morales sometimes seems lethargic against opponents who are not fellow superstars. So many of his fights have been big fights that, as Larry pointed out, he tends to drop to the level of his opposition. He doesn't look really hot Come on. tonight. Come on. Eric. When that happens, he usually finds a, a way to correct things and to win the fight. Uh, but he prides himself on his boxing ability, and I don't know if he is yet convinced that uh, he can't box with Raheem. Once that happens, then you'll see him attack. Well, Morales loves competition and said before this fight, it'll be fun to fight somebody who's different from the other opponents I've fought. I haven't tested myself against a slick boxer. I think I can do it. Hey! Now there are questions. Next Wednesday, it's the season premiere of Inside the NFL. Join Bob Costas, Chris Collinsworth, Dan Marino, and Chris Carter for picks, analysis, and all the highlights of the first week of the NFL season. Now, when you get inside, he's trying to beat you to the punch. You had to beat him back to the punch. You got to work inside or get the hell out of here. Yeah, he's, very, he's very difficult, so be sure you the aggressive. Don't get over Sellers there because he's very difficult, very elusive. Power punches through round two. CompuBox finding Morales landing 15 out of 63. Raheem, 18 out of 54. Slight edge to Raheem. Raheem has been way more effective with his jab than has Morales. Harold Letterman gives the first two rounds of the fight to the lesser known fighter. So former American Olympian Zahir Raheem, his professional career has been a disappointment to him and to some boxing fans has carved out the beginnings of a potential upset bid. Morales jabbing to the body. But he jabs so hard that he actually gets off balance after he throws his jab sometimes. His right leg is totally in there. Looping over the top with the right, and now hooked to the body, and there's a big right hand by Morales. A lot of swinging, not much landing. Right now, Raheem has a much better fix on the rhythm of 
Morales than Morales does on him. I agree, Larry, and, and it's being a big factor right now. Because Morales pushes everything off on that simple hard one-two. And right now, Raheem is doing more different things, better upper body movement, everything. You wouldn't believe this is the same fighter who fought Rocky Juarez. This has been a tremendous round for Zahir Raheem. Raheem has stood in, traded shots with Morales, gotten the better of the exchanges, shown strength and power in addition to his boxing skill. This round has been a showcase for how good Zahir Rahim might be. And uh, Morales is uh, fighting mainly on his left feet a lot of the time. His whole body is leaning over his left feet, and Zahir is taking, uh, taking advantage of that by landing much faster punches. Stop. The thing that Zaire's got to watch out for is that right hand still, because if he ever gets caught with that long right hand that Morales is shooting, he's going to have some problems. Body shot by Raheem, great left hook upstairs. There are stretches of these rounds where Zaire Raheem is totally dominant, because as both Larry and Emmanuel have pointed out, he's the one who's controlling the rhythm of the fight. Deep I'm breath now. Come on, I'm give me a deep breath. Everything in the bottom, inside, the back. Don't throw any punches on top. Hit him in the body. Just relax, take your time, put the combination together. Relax, you are. You look good. So then I got the push. You got all downstairs. The knockout gonna come. All right. It's gonna come I see. Everything cool? Brother, you went a long time to get here, man. You here. When I went through the first three rounds, he ain't got nothing, baby. <laughs> the Mexican and Mexican-American fans in this crowd have gone silent. Shocked and or discouraged by what they've seen so far as Eric Morales in the first three rounds has, has been bested, quite frankly, by Americans. I hear Raheem. Harold Letterman, how do you have it so far? Okay, Jim. Three rounds to nothing, 30 to 27, Zahir Rahim. Jim, I gotta tell you something, these Philadelphia guys are tough. You know, Eric Morales is making two basic mistakes that, you know, it's causing him to get hit so much. Number one, he's reaching. He's absolutely leaning in and reaching, and when he does that, Rahim nails him. Number two, he's a tall guy who's trying to fight short. Now watch, you'll see him crouch down constantly to try to land shots, and every time he does it, Rahim nails him. Three to nothing, Raheem. I have the same score. I wonder if the judges do. Now, all of a sudden, Morales is backing up, looking to counterpunch Raheem. And let's see if Raheem will take the invitation. Which, which shows a, a kind of confusion on Morales' part and exactly how to attack. And he gets clocked by a vicious right hand. Now, Raheem is not a big puncher. If he were, he would have been hurt by that punch. Morales backs Raheem off with an uppercut. Swings and misses with a left hook. Another right hand by Morales. Raheem backs him away with two perfect jabs. Right on the chin. This, this looks like it's the making of an upset right now, the way it's going. Unless something drastically changes, it would have to be one big punch from Morales. But other than that, it looks like Zaheem is going to end up beating him. What tactical adjustment should Morales be making here, Emmanuel, to I don't try to change the fight? I don't think he can. I think a lot is based with his body rhythm right now, just and his balance. I mean, everything is just jabbing and leaning in, fighting off of his left foot on the floor, and his right foot is helping air half the time when he's moving in, and that makes a big difference. Bottom line, this is not great Morales, but that's not so much the story of the fight. This is superb Zahir Rahim so far. I think That's the big story. Yes, it's, it's coming. I think the man is fighting at his right weight for a change, and it's making a big difference. And you know, maybe 135 isn't the right weight for Eric Morales. You know, you, you always hear fighters talking about weight. I got to do this. I had to take too much weight off. They have all kinds of stories, alibis, excuses for why uh, they didn't do what they were supposed to do. But all of a sudden, we're looking at a fighter, Rahim. 
who seems to have told the truth when he, <laughs> when he said all of that. <laughs> yeah. He still better watch that right hand. Though. He's oh, still balling oh, for that powerful short overhead go, right there. Morales is shooting. Morales is having a better round. But the, he's having a better round than he's had, but is he having a better round than Raheem? I think the flow, as you said last year, is moving towards Raheem. He seems the rhythm is more heels for the fight. Okay, Flaco. Respirando oh, duro. Skinny. Deep press. Respirando duro. Respirando duro, hijo. Deep press, son. Come on. No. Give me some water. Here is a sequence of the left hands that Raheem has driven off Morales inside and outside. This is at this moment the quietest crowd I've ever seen at an Eric Morales fight. He has been bottled lightning. Nothing but excitement throughout his professional career. But right now, his fans are stunned by the degree to which he's been technically outgunned in the first four rounds by Zahir Rahim. Power connects through round four. Morales 27 out of 130. Rahim 41 of 104. Harold Letterman gave the fourth round to Morales. That's the first round he's won on the Letterman scorecard. And he gave him that round because comparatively he did better than the other rounds, but actually he probably didn't even win that, but it was a comparison round. Had one good right uppercut, and that was about it. Raheem landing at will with the jab. It's not a big jab, it's a flicking jab, but it's too quick for Morales right now. Raheem with the right hand. Right on the button. Wet spot in the middle of the ring. A very aware Zahir Rahim steps away. That was impressive. It was impressive. He showed real presence of mind and confidence the way he did that. Oh. Unstoppable with the left hand. Straight right hand lands. Morales gets in a right hand over the top. Morales tries to cut off the ring. Raheem gets away and stuns him with a right hand. Let's see if Morales is really hurt. I'm not sure Raheem I, wants to find him. I don't know if he was really hurt. I think he got caught off balance yeah. coming in and didn't expect it because he fights, as I said, on his part, left leg and his right leg is off balance. Yeah, part of that was off balance, but he certainly wouldn't have done that if he hadn't been hit. And Raheem, oh, so, I think, showed so you right there that he's totally comfortable trying to win a decision and confident that he's gonna do so. And there's that wet spot that Raheem avoided before. Why don't they dry it off? All right, Jim, the referee should stop this. Referee John Sorley not electing to stop the action and dry the wet spot, even though Raheem has slipped on it twice and just slipped a third time. I'm wondering if his shoes, it could possibly be his shoes also. The same spot that I don't see Morales. Two great out. right hands by Zahir Raheem. That ends the small Morales rally. Another tremendous round for Raheem, dominating the Mexican star. This is all Zahir Raheem in this round. He has made out of Eric Morales look awkward and slow in round five. You can't do no with you. You can't do no with you. Can't do no with you. Can't do no with you. How you feel? How you feel? Take your time. Fight ain't over yet, all right? Ain't over yet. Take your time, all right? Don't get careless. Don't be worried. Everything's all right. Exactly. Come on. You want that? You want to get it to him? Take your time, baby. Get it coming. <laughs> hey, hey, 
hey, hey, hey. I'm going to tell you, man. Too much. If Eric Morales didn't know he was in a fight before this and thought that he would be able to just turn up his jets and turn it around, he is finding out differently here as we get to the midpoint of this fight. Through five rounds, Eric Morales has landed five jabs, excuse me, eight jabs. Less than two jabs per round. Raheem, 20 out of 120, but he's been way more effective in that category. The best laid plans. As Larry Merton pointed out at the top of the evening, the brilliant top ranked matchmaker, go, Bruce go, Trampler, thought it would be okay to let Morales fight against Zahir Raheem. You can't hold like that. Here's a slip. Well, not a knockdown. Now you're seeing vintage Morales, knowing that he's losing and all those great fights he's had with the world, Pacquiao. He's coming out now to try to win a fight push, by just push. punching now and power punching and making a fight of it. And this will be a test of Raheem's professionalism. It is. And it, it's going to be a big test. Raheem has a good chin himself, but he's going to be tested tonight. His skill is superior, but he's going to be his chin and his heart is going to be tested at this stage right now. Well, the key moment may already have come as Raheem is wobbled by a right hand from Morales. He went to Greece. He went to Greece. I don't know. Is there something is wrong. Hey, Raheem just said to the judge, "Will you wipe the ring?" Yes. Will he's you asking wipe the ring? He's asking referee John Shirley to do what we've been talking about for two rounds. Wipe the wet spots. Shirley's still ignoring it. Nice body punch combination. Mendes professionalism, the way he dug the left hand to the body. It was not a low punch. It was a perfect punch, just as that was a perfect left hook. No doubt there are a lot of fans sitting at home saying, where in the world has Zahir Rahim been for nine years? He's showing the kind of talent that sent him to the Olympics. Well, well nothing I can do about it. The referee says there's nothing he can do about it. There really? is something he can do about it. How about a towel? Well, I don't, I don't know. I can't see from where we are whether there's one or not, but I know that both guys have shoes on, and I'm only seeing one guy slipping. That's what I'm beginning to wonder. Well, do you think it's the paint and not and not wet spots? But sometimes, you know, when a fighter has a little fear and nervous that they fall down a lot all the time, too, even though they're not aware of it. Well, but it's also his style when he tries to get away or, or, or bend down low. I don't Sweet think he's got anything to be nervous about. No, Sweet P. Whitaker was one of his heroes. He, he told us yesterday, and sometimes he gets down in that fashion. Whatever it is, he's been down about five times, and that's unusual in a fight. And the way it looks, he's going to go down a few more times. Cesar Chavez and Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. That's the closest they've come to smiling all night. Mostly these have been looks of great concern and consternation over the way their buddy Eric Morales is having difficulty with Zahir Rahim. That referee is against us. Then that son of a gun, you gotta watch out for that referee. You work fine, but listen, work from a distance. <laughs> Best punch early in the round. Good hard right by Morales. And there you see his feet slipping. Part of that from an awkward defensive position. A part of that from apparently from the uh, signage in the middle of the ring which sometimes can get very slippery. Incidentally, that last shot came from our new high-speed slow-motion replay camera. You'll be seeing great replays from that new camera fight after fight. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through six? <laughs> okay, Jim. 59, 55, five rounds to one, Zahir Rahim. You know, Jim, I gotta tell you, he's getting off first, doubling up on his shots. I mean, he's moving, good ring generalship. 
good defense. I mean, he's slipping a lot of Eric Morales' big, big shots. There he got off first and nailed him real good. And as far as the shoes go, I think they're both using rubber sole shoes. But when you hit that wet spot, you're going to slip. Five to one, Raheem. I still don't see a wet spot. I don't think it is a wet spot. It's that slick sign. That's something which is painted over and can be slick. Well, in that case, then the referee's correct in saying there's nothing I can do about it. And that, I'm sure, is, is what referee John Shirley is thinking, is that it's the paint. Jab, jab. Morales trying to jab back. Right hand, but not clean. Intensity is about and has dropped off just a little bit as Morales begins to search for answers. A couple of rounds ago, it looked as though he was going to go ahead and try to make it a war. Now he backs Raheem off with the right hand. Suddenly, Raheem begins to move more and punch less. The inner strength of Raheem is going to be a big factor going down the stretch guard. The talent is there, but I just. He's going to be tested to see how strong he is inside. Emmanuel, you know him. You trained him for a brief period of time. Do you think Zahir Rahim has the kind of self-belief that will be necessary to go on through with this? No, he has, he has doubts, but I think tonight he should rise to the occasion. But he's, he's not one of the strongest individuals I've dealt with internally. But he has a lot of skill, and tonight, the way things are going so easy, there's it's no way he should lose control He's of the fight. He's fighting the fight of his career. He is fighting a tremendous fight. It's not out of the question that on some card, he might have won all six rounds. Time. Go over here. Go over here. Eric Morales needs to have his shoe tied. Morales practically running to the corner to get it tied. Vamos, vamos. Eric, right there. Eric. Right there. Time in. as he goes back to his corner after seven. Sometimes the side of beef jumps off the counter and attacks the butcher. Is that what's happening here tonight? The 1996 United States Olympic boxing team produced five legitimate world champions. 112-pounder Eric Morrell, 125-pounder Floyd Mayweather Jr., 147-pounder Fernando Vargas, 156-pounder David Reed, and 178-pounder Antonio Tarver. Raheem said, I went to the Olympics thinking I was just as good as any of those guys, maybe better. It took me years to get over the disappointment of losing both in Atlanta and then not getting a great start to my professional career. He's trying to make up for a lot of it tonight. Oh, what a right hand by Raheem. 
If he had his hands tight at the end of his punches, Morales would really be in trouble tonight. What do you mean by that? Uh, he I mean, punches, but he doesn't have his hands squeezed tight at the end of his punches. Right? How can you tell that? Well, I was looking at him, but I've, I've worked with him before, too. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked with him. So he's looking yeah. to slap his opponent? No, he don't say shoot some straight, but he don't be squeezing it. The, the degree of tightness of your hands has a lot to do with the power that you have, believe it or not. Some of your best punchers are just guys who just squeeze their hands tight at the end. Yeah. Tremendous difference. But, but the layman who's never had boxing gloves on underestimates the degree of strength and commitment it takes to keep the gloves squeezed tight. And some of the gloves are actually designed where it's difficult to even hold them tight. Nice Raheem body getting punches. in three great body yeah. shots. Mixing body shots into his attack now more freely than before. Morales is still searching still, for an still answer. He's got a lot of power in those right hands. He's right hand misses. He's shooting up very powerful. He may be off balance afterwards, but if one of them lands. But he hasn't really caught Raheem or hurt him no. at any point in the fight. He can't get his rhythm because he doesn't have anyone that's really fighting with him the way that he was with Pacquiao and with Barrera. This guy is fighting a type of a fight where he can't get a fighting rhythm to go on. You know, without taking anything that's, that's away from right Morales, uh, in other divisions, he's always been the bigger guy. At 122, he was bigger than anybody. At 126, he was bigger. At 130, he's not the bigger guy tonight, as well as fighting a real slick American boxer. And Larry, it's good that you brought that up because I thought that was really the big difference between the fight with him and Pacquiao. And I picked him to win the fight simply because he was naturally bigger than Pacquiao was. Morales' father keeps talking about how the referee isn't giving Eric a fair shake. Memo to Jose, it's not about the referee. The referee isn't doing hardly anything in this fight. That's what I'm talking about. It's time to show up and show the fuck up, man. That's what I'm talking about. Round number nine, baby. You can pitch him a shout out. Like I said, I don't know what the hell they see, but I see you beating his ass. Now, you're going to have Don't be too good with him. And he comes close. Belt him, and he gets close. Don't hold him up. Hit him hard. He, he hits you low, so hit him back. One more clean punch among many. If a fight were determined simply by who landed the most clean punches, this fight would almost be over. If Howard connects through eight, Morales 46 out of 221, Raheem 84 out of 199. So it, it is a working margin of significant proportions for Raheem, at least in terms of copy box numbers, maybe on the scorecards too. Well, now we're gonna see if a fighter everybody regards as one of the great fighters of this time can turn it up and find some way to turn it around. Indeed. Does Eric Morales have another gear? You know, speaking of scoring, as much as I hate the Olympic style scoring, if this was one of those where they have that computer scoring for clean blows, and you get so far ahead, they just stop the fight, this would probably have been stopped because of the amount of clean blows that Raheem has landed as compared to Morales. Well, I'm glad it's not that kind of fight because I'm not ready for him to stop it, Emmanuel. I want to see what happens in the last <laughs> four rounds. As Eric Morales tries to salvage his chance at yet another big fight, he's getting batted around by an obstreperous and not terribly respectful Zaire Rahim. You heard Rahim's trainer Don House say, I see you beating him up. What do the judges see? Rahim still beating Morales to the punch in the center of the ring. Morales can't decide whether to box or brawl. Now he's trying to lure a, a more aggressive guy who was aggressive and a better puncher would have Morales in big, big trouble right now because he's so confused, his confidence is gone. And 
And his basics with his balance is horrible. Larry Merchant invoked the name of top ranked promoter promotions, Bruce Trampler, the matchmaker at the beginning of the evening. He was partially paying tribute to the fact that Trampler has a reputation for being as good as anybody in the sport at choosing an opponent who can make for an interesting fight, but who still allows his star to win. Somewhere in the arena, Bruce Trampler is wondering right now, why did I pick Zahir Rene? <laughs> well, as we said, it isn't an exact science. Well, it's not all bad. Zahir just signed a promotional contract recently with top rank, so they're not out in the dark all the way. Meanwhile, Manny Pacquiao of the Philippines did his part of the business earlier this evening, knocking out his opponent, Hector Velasquez. Now Pacquiao waits to see if Eric Morales can uphold his end of the bargain and preserve their big money rematch. But it doesn't look all that promising. That's it. Deep breath. You're right. Let's go. Let's get some water. We can, we're all right, Eric. This, you, you're not tired. Right hand hook. Boom, boom. He's going to run right into it anyway. In only two rounds has Morales landed in double figures. In every round, Raheem has landed in double figures. Round 10, baby. Round 10. Second up. Round 10 begins, and the question to me Water, is, Harold, Water. is the fight already over on your scorecard? <laughs> Just about, Jim. Eight rounds to one. 89, 82, Zahir Rahim. Jim, I gotta tell you, I, I think the worst thing that Eric Morales can do is reach. He leads in and he reaches, it's driving me crazy. Because every time he does that, he gets nailed by Raheem's right hand. Yeah, I mean, you just got to watch it. He will lean in, stick that left hand way out, and bam, Raheem comes over the top or whacks him with a left hook. Yep. Eight to one, Raheem. Raheem leading there with a solid left hook. I have it seven to two. Now Morales got in a good left hook there. Morales needs contact and a lot of it. Another slippage by Raheem. Mexican fans believe sooner or later there should be a knockdown. At seven, eight, eight unanswered punches for Raheem before Morales finally threw back. Another beautiful short right hand counter too as he moved in. Straight left. That's some of Zaire, I thought landed the short right hand over there. Zaire's doing everything. There's a right hand by Morales and a left hook to follow. But no damage. Eight jabs in a row by Raheem, no answer from Morales. Finally, he sticks the left and misses. Now you can see that Morales, tired of eating counter right hands, is getting reluctant to throw. fight Zahir Rahim. <laughs> it's a little different. That guy plays a lot of intensity and a lot of fury the way he fights. But Rahim's but, but a but big, wait, the slick wait, the boxer. Wait, the wait, the wait, the wait. You're yep. absolutely right. He's a 135-pound slick boxer. Yep. Not the right guy. Oh, what a left hook. Backs Morales right off. Eric walked right into it. 
This is becoming almost embarrassing. It really is. For Morales. It's a wipeout. Good fight, Zay. Good fight. All right, let's go. Son dos rounds, eh? We got two rounds to go. Come on, you saw what you did in the round. You gotta do the same thing in the next two rounds. Come on, the, the other guy is just trying to survive to impress the judges. He's not doing much. All right, your jab is working like there's no tomorrow. Keep that jab in his face. This is a basic one, two, three combination guy. Yeah. All right, one, two, three combination. Boom, 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 get out. Yeah. All we got to do for the next two rounds, all right? Yeah. Basic combination. We ain't got to do nothing fast with Chris. You're a boxer. Box, baby. Break it out You don't even seem to wonder, Emmanuel, whether Raheem can maintain his poise and his conditioning. Raheem, go over there. Because he seems Give me the towel. so Give me the towel. calm in the middle of what should be a storm. I'm not yeah. done yet. And he's a better to the faint and concentrate. Seems to be very good. Through 10 rounds, Eric Morales has landed only 18 out of 163 jabs. Raheem has landed more than twice as many. And thrown a great deal more. And now he starts to pump the jab again. You heard trainer Don House say, keep jabbing. One, two, three, that's all you need to do. One, two, three, of course, is jab, right, cross, left hook. Morales reaching, lunging, missing. Raheem popping him and moving away. the first time Morales has slipped in the same way Raheem has slipped several times. I think Larry's right. It's probably the paint because there's no water on the floor at all, I can see. I agree. Now. Morales is dead. Keep referring to the referee as being biased. It's just like someone, the old joke about the butler did it. Morales felt like he had a moment there. He landed a left hook inside and thought that he had hurt Raheem. Raheem held up both hands. Usually that means, yes, he was a little bit wobbled. Crowd got excited, but now the moment has passed. Have we seen it when a fighter like Morales, superstar, trained by his father, gets in trouble, falls behind in a fight, and never once does the father trainer say, you know what, you've lost the fight, unless you go in there and stage a huge rally and turn it all around. We haven't heard that come out of Jose Morales. No, today. that's refusing to face reality. And a lot of time, the fathers actually go into a state of shock, I'll be honest with you, themselves. And they are just kept us in the corners in those cases. Like Felix Trinidad Sr. when Trinidad was being blown up by Bernard Hopkins in Madison Square Garden. Like Shane Mosley twice against Vernon Forrest when his father Jack simply never showed the desperation. They, the fathers just clammed up in those cases, didn't know what they were seeing, what to do, what the answer was, anything. And the fighter needs help when he's in those type situations. slip on the paint. The Morales fans thought maybe it was a knockdown. They trade right hands in the center of the ring. Ten seconds left in the 11th. Raheem. Right hand by Morales. That was actually That's right. been a knockdown. Raheem. Raheem's glove touched the canvas, and Morales didn't get credit for the knockdown. We'll have to look at the replay, but I believe Raheem's glove touched the canvas. Okay, Eric, deep breath now. Come on, let me let me put some water on your balls. Last round. You gotta go this. Get me face right hand up, hook the move. All right, he's desperate right now. All right, don't play around. A desperate Morales, a high shot 
It followed by a shorter one, and yes, the glove did touch the ground. Technically, that's a knockdown. Yep, the right glove. did not call it. Uh, from that angle, I really couldn't see clearly myself. Actually, I'm it, not a, it appeared I'm, I'm that I really can not see. Yeah. I really couldn't well, see. But, but regardless of what, Zaire's going to have to, because he's won maybe 10 rounds, he cannot just rest on that. He's got to get some respect this last round. Or if it don't, it'll be a nightmare for him. He's either won seven, eight, nine, or 10 rounds. You know, uh, it is. Yeah, but he's going to have to fight exactly some. How many. Guys, think Taylor Chavez. Taylor Chavez. All right. Morales is in the position that Chavez was in coming out in the last round against another Philadelphia fighter having to score a knockout to win. Yeah, but I'm not sure he's done anywhere near the kind of damage that Chavez did to Taylor to the body and the well, straight right I, I hands agree, the but that's the desperate situation he's in. Yep, I agree. The 11th round was as close as Morales has been to having a big round. Not right. as big as he might have liked. Raheem doesn't feel as though he needs to win the 12th. I just, I would box, you know. You know, you get paid to go 12 rounds, work the whole 12 rounds. All he's got to do is once he starts boxing and hitting, Morales, Morales is going to slow down his attack. That'll take the pressure off of him a lot. I think he's got to think he's got to win this fight. This round, excuse me. Let's remember, Morales is the star. The crowd is a Morales crowd. The judges are American judges. Two from California and one from New York. Dr. James Jenkin, Raul Caez Sr. from California, Julie Letterman. That's what from he New needs. York. That's what he needs to keep doing right there. Great right and, hand and by that, Morales, I mean by uh, Raheem, back Morales off. And that and that can slow him down a lot more, get a little bit more respect. Another exchange won by the American fighter. is showing his fighting will and spirit as he tries to lift himself in these last two rounds. He's been in so many of these wars right here. But he's only landed a couple of big shots. Nothing earth-shaking. And now in the last minute of the fight, after all of the wars and all of the years, to wonder if Eric Morales, in moving up to 135 pounds tonight, finally bit off more than he could chew. He said it would be interesting for him to take on the kind of challenge he hadn't had before. Now maybe you see why he hadn't had this kind of challenge before. Morales scuffling and scraping, trying to get something done, but the clock is winding down. And Raheem backs him off again with a straight right hand. Zahir Rahim is going to try to make the closing statement in the last 10 seconds as Eric Morales looks for one more shot and it's over. We'll see what the judges saw. I thought the Rahim won the fight. But remember earlier we also pointed out how the judges' kindness helped Oscar De La Hoya out in a similar scenario in what was purported to be a run-up to a major showdown between him and Hopkins. Harold Letterman gave 10 of the 12 rounds here to Zaire Rahim. The fight you're referring to, of course, was Felix Sturm against Oscar De La Hoya. And frankly, this was a much more one-sided fight than Felix Sturm against Oscar De La Hoya. We mentioned once again, the judges are Americans. Raul Caiz Sr. of California, 17 title fights. Uh, scored Marquez over Salido, that was pretty easy. Dr. James Jenkin, 38 title fights. Had Castillo, the winner over Joel Casamayor, 116-112. Maybe he likes body punchers. And Julie Letterman, 13 title fights. Scored Corrales over Casamayor in their second fight 
115-112. The previous scorecard we showed you was from the first corrales gasmoy fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rice, Alicia, Tina. Michael Buffer's already got the numbers. Let's see who won. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Staples Center, we go to the judges' scorecards. Julie Letterman scores at 118 to 110. Dr. James Jenkin, 116 to 112. Raul Kaye Sr., 115 to 113. All to the winner by unanimous decision. Zaire King Rohi! Decision, right winner, and Julie Letterman had the scorecard identical to her father's. <laughs> All's well that ends well. Eric Morales soundly beaten by Zaheer Rahim in his first fight at 135 pounds. Manny Pacquiao will look for another opponent against whom to make his next batch of millions of dollars. And it probably won't be with Zaheer Rahim. No, I don't think he no should way. ever fight Zaheer Rahim. I think he should go back to 126 maybe and knock out some more featherweights, but we'll see what happens in the uh, crowded 126 and 130 pound weight classes. Yeah, Pacquiao is an exciting fighter though. Pacquiao is an exciting fighter. Fights. No matter who he fights, it'll be a big attraction. Eric Morales will be back for more big fights, but this was Zahir Rahim's night, Zahir Rahim's moment. He landed nearly twice as many total punches as did Morales. He threw more punches than did Morales. Amazing, no one would have predicted that. And he landed at a significantly higher percentage. Power shots, and again, these will be dominant numbers for Zahir Rahim. No one would have predicted yeah. that Zahir Rahim would land nearly twice as many power shots as Eric Morales and land at twice as high a connect percentage. This was a brilliant technical performance by a fighter who put it all together on the night when he needed to. And Larry Merchant stands by with Philadelphia's Zahir Rahim. Zahir, congratulations. How did you pull this off? It was due. It was due. It was my time. I've been in this game a long time, Larry. I stuck with it. Had faith and I studied my craft. You know what I mean? I stayed in the gym and always believed in myself and nobody else will. And I worked hard. It wasn't a gift, man. I earned it. I earned it. Are you over finally with the depression of what happened to you in the 96 yeah. Olympics and when you went home to Philadelphia to find David Reed, the hero? Oh, yes. I mean, it's been almost 10 years. And I finally got my just due, but I'm still not happy and done yet. I haven't, I haven't yet accomplished my professional goals. I want to be a legend, and I won't stop until I'm done. What did you see in Morales that you could exploit? I wouldn't say uh, so much as Morales in particular, but it's what I, it's what I believe in myself. I know, you know, Morales is a champion. He's a legend. He's beat plenty of good guys, and I take my hat off to the man. He's a great warrior, and I give him all the credit. But I just believed in myself. Even if it was another champion there, I would have believed this the same way. It wasn't just particular Morales. It's just I believed in myself, Larry. Were you surprised that you could hit him with so many clean punches? Um, yes. I'm not going to be cocky. Yes, I was, Larry. I was. How, how did you turn around your style from somebody we all thought was this slick boxer into a boxer puncher who could beat a guy like Morales? Well, Larry, I told you in the, in the meeting that, uh, you know, I learned how to train for conditioning and believe in myself and not to lose weight, which was killing me. So I actually just, you know, took my time and, and actually focused and ate right and believed in myself. Who would you like to fight next? Whoever my manager, my promoter put in front of me, Larry. It, it doesn't matter from here. I, I've accomplished my goal. I'm, I'm over the depression of that, you know, I felt I was a failure after the Olympics. I'm happy now, and it doesn't matter. Whoever you want me to fight, Larry. Whoever HBO said they want me to fight, let's go. Thank you, and congratulations thank you. again and I for a great Agmar performance. Thank you, Larry. And I want to thank Eric Morales in this camp. He's a great fighter, man. He's a legend. And I wanted to say what's up to Fred Jenkins in North Philly, Tony Holden, Tina, and the Holden family. Thank you. I love you. All right. Eric? You describe what happened to you tonight. Eric, describe what happened to you tonight. Bueno, es un peleador muy difícil, se los dije. Es un peleador eh, rápido, difícil. Eh, no, nunca, casi nunca presenta pelea. 
y eso es complicado. Yeah, and like I said, he's very elusive, very hard to fight. He never really put up a fight because he was moving around so much. And yet he hit you a lot of clean punches, didn't he? Pero él te pegó muchos golpes, limpio golpes. Sí, no, 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 claro, este, sí nos pegó algunos golpes, pero por los mismos que le golpeamos, este, yo creo que fueron muchos más, muchos más golpes a las, a las manos que, que contados los golpes fueron los que me pegaron y bueno. Yes, he hit me a lot of punches, but he also missed a lot, and he also hit me on my arms. I was blocking a lot of them. Do you feel that the weight made any difference? This is your first fight at lightweight. Sientes tú que el peso 135 libras tuvo algún efecto porque fue tu primera pelea en peso ligero? Bueno, realmente no te lo sé decir, no, pero sí, sí es un poco diferente, pero pues más que todo es un peleador difícil, difícil, no, y eso se complica más en, en cualquier peso. I don't think the weight had was too, uh, too much. It's just that he was a very difficult fighter. Does this mean you will go back to fight at 130 pounds? In, or even 126 because you're so much bigger and stronger than most opposition. Esto significa que tú regresarías a la 130 o tal vez si puedes la 126. Oh no no jamás para adelante. No never I would never go that way. What do you see happening now? Qué qué tú ves qué pasando ahora de ahora en adelante. Primero que nada pues vamos a ver el video vamos a ver qué pasó vamos a ver con calma qué 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 es lo que pasó en video y después tomar, eh, tomaremos una decisión. First we're going to see what happened. We're going to review the tape, see what really what happened, then we'll make a decision. Do you think that the rematch with Pacquiao is gone for now? Piensa tú que la revancha con Pacquiao ya no es? No. No lo sé. Vamos a ver. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Jim. Thank you very much. So Zahirahim joins Marco Antonio Barrera as the only two fighters ever to beat Eric Morales. And before we get to Zahir and his new eminence in the sport, <laughs> one thing that occurs to us about Morales, all these great fights over the years, most of them, as Larry pointed out, pointed out, going the distance, so many wars, so many rounds, has all of that finally caught up to Eric Morales? I think our difficulty is the effect of that. And also you had an opponent that was taking advantage of his shortcomings because every time that he punched before, it was always someone's body there to brace him. And this time he had an elusive guy who was moving back, making him fall off balance, taking advantage of his uh, bad basic foundation. And the guy came in focused and prepared to fight. And I do think the weight did make a big difference for us out here. I'm not sure that Eric Morales is a 135-pound fighter. I think he'd have trouble with guys like Corrales and Castillo, who are much bigger hitters, it seems to me, than he is. I'm with Larry. I think he's got to go back to 130. <laughs> I think so, too. I mean, the winner could do that because he's a loser boxer. But being that Morales is a physical fighter who basically wears his guys down, overpowers them, and as Larry pointed out earlier, most of his opponents earlier, he was really much bigger than they were physically. And it's a new ball game now. Well, you made a great point about Raheem during the fight. He did not have self-belief when he came to train with you a couple of years ago. Now, trainer Don House has gotten him into a condition, a physical condition, where he can focus more on fighting. With that kind of self-belief, where does he filter into the 135-pound picture with guys like Corrales, Castillo, and Juan Diaz? Because in my view, maybe he's the best boxer of the group. When you consider the fact that he has not been active at all consider maybe one or two fights a year, not even fought top competition, and fought so well under these conditions, this crowd, hostility, good opponent, it means that he's going to only get better. And if they have him fight on a regular basis, which I'm quite sure top rank will do since they have him now, he's going to be a real big threat in the lightweight division. And his confidence is definitely going to grow. So he can keep those spectacular trunks and that great robe? <laughs> yeah. He grew into them tonight. Larry Merchant? What about Zahir Rahim and his new position in the lightweight division? I don't know. Not too many guys want to fight a fighter like him. That's right. You know, so, you know, that'll play itself out. I think we just ought to celebrate uh, that a young man who thought of himself as a star once and fell to earth and uh, couldn't overcome it for a long time suddenly found himself and that's that in itself is a, a remarkable story and, and a great story for American fight fans to see a guy who was a member of the United States Olympic team all the way back in 96 emerging tonight finally into the limelight of his pro career and I'd like to say you know one final word Jim a personal and uh, even parochial a word about the disaster in New Orleans like a lot of tourists I have 
very fond memories of many visits to New Orleans. I hitchhiked there from Oklahoma as a 17-year-old, saw the streetcar named Desire barreling down the street, couldn't believe my eyes, jumped on and went for a few stops and had many great adventures and misadventures there. We've done a couple of fights there with uh, Tommy Hearns um, and um, Roy Jones. I covered a fight there once with Joe Frazier. Uh, Muhammad Ali and Sugar Ray Robinson fought in New Orleans. And New Orleans produced a couple of champions in the modern era. Willie Pastrano, the light heavyweight. Joe Brown, an outstanding uh, lightweight. And finally, I'd like to say a couple of words about Bernard Fernandez, the boxing writer for my old paper in Philadelphia, the Daily News, who comes from New Orleans. His entire family was dislocated, lost everything they had. Uh, a relative suffered a stroke and died. Um, we're thinking of you, Bernard. Indeed. And of course, not just New Orleans. All along the Gulf Coast, my relatives in Gulfport and Biloxi, uh, all of our thoughts are, are with you. Bay St. Louis, the casinos where we've done fights in the past. Uh, we'll see how all of that reemerges in the future, but uh, like all Americans, we extend our sympathies and our condolences to everyone who has lost so much on the Gulf Coast tonight. We'll have a final word on what happened here in boxing in just a moment after these words about what's upcoming on HBO.